Hi everybody, it's day four with the Beck Spider. So where we left off on day three was I did a complete leak down on the engine and found cylinders one and two to be really good actually, but three and four were kind of a mess. Three had what looked like a stuck valve and four uh, was just hissing away. So they're both are not sealing properly. So we're gonna have to get to that. Now I talked to the owner about this and there's a couple of things I suppose you could try, but I really feel like this head has to come off and really go to the machine shop. So we agreed that's what we're going to do. So there's a lot of stuff that has to get done. I got to pull the shroud off, all the tin, the exhaust system has to come off, obviously the carburetor and such has to come off of the car as well. So we've got a lot of work to do to get this head off. And then once we get the head loose, there is a chance it may not even come out with the engine still in the car. I kind of hope so. I've read that some people have been able to get it out. There's a cross member that goes, that sort of diagonal member that goes across and the head could sort of interfere with that in the back. But we're hoping, fingers crossed, we'll be able to get this off without having to raise or lower the engine at all. And I certainly don't want to take the engine out of this thing. So, okay, so that's what's up for today. I'm going to start by removing this negative terminal on the battery here. I'm going to be underneath the car and close enough to the starter and everything else. I just don't want any surprises down here at all. And that should take care of that. This is what we're into for the exhaust here. We've got a clamp down here on the bottom, actually forward extractor there. And then up above, we've got these two bolts we have to get off of the head. And then this guy actually is this, and it is up here. So we have to get those two bolts off as well. I started by putting a little bit of PT Blaster on all of these, all these bolts. The ones up here on the heads look a little dodgy. These don't look too bad. I'm gonna start by taking off this clamp here and then working my way up to the extractors here later. I just want this thing sort of loose enough, but still sort of supported here when I pull these guys off. Well, I'm also going to remove the clutch cable here just because it sits underneath this and it'll make it a lot easier to get this off. I think we're all clear. We just have the two nuts at the very top of the extractors there that we left in just for safety reasons. So let's go ahead and pull those two. And in theory, this should sort of come this way a little bit and then out it should come. that on that side, not that on that side. And down it comes, huh? Okay. Yay! Next are our forward extractors here. Let's see if we can get these things off or they're gonna be a fuss. Forgot our last nut up there we were gonna get from the top, but I was able to get it from the bottom, so sweet. All right, now this thing is loose. It doesn't have a lot of travel, but it doesn't have too far to go. Let's see if it'll come out. So let me show you what the deal is. We can't quite get this guy off here because it's banging up against the torsion tube up there. And then on this side, it looks like somebody's even beat the crap out of it to get it over this this cross member here. So it's pretty loose. And I think we can get the cylinder head to go that way. And this will just kind of be out of the way. So I'm not gonna worry about this right this minute. We've got the interference of these studs up there. We have to worry about two up there, but we'll figure that out. Now with the muffler out and that extractor loose at least, 
I'm gonna get to taking off bits so I can get the cylinder head free. All right, here we go. Well, take a look at this as well. This was the gasket for the intake manifold and look at that. So that definitely needs to be replaced. Holy cow. Yay! And I didn't have to take the shroud off, which is cool. I may still have to take it off if I can't get enough clearance, but yay, finally got this thing off. Now we're getting pretty close here. We want to make super sure we don't dislodge the cylinders. We don't want those things coming loose. So we don't have to reseal them and all that. So um, I'm going to get a strap and I'm going to strap them in so that they, so that nothing bad happens and that they'll stay put. I have my cylinders finally all strapped in. There's the one to the rear and that's the forward one there. A little hard to see, but you can see the strap kind of going between the head and the cylinder holding that on. Same thing with the yellow one. So next, what we need to do here is take off the valve cover and start taking off those head bolts and get this thing ready to come out. This is a great opportunity to inspect these guys as well. They're moving nice and freely, but we want to look at the ends of these things, the part that actually pushes on the valve on each one of them. It's something to have the machine shop take a look at. All right, we should be able to pull our push rods out. So these are the push rods in question, huh? Are these the steel rods, the chromoly rods? They don't look like aluminum, do they? I bet they are. This is a magnet, so in theory, Yep, there we go, we've got steel rods. It's always a good idea just to verify if that's what you thought. So remember in the last episode we were talking about valve lash and these steel rods don't expand nearly as fast as the aluminum heads and the rest of the cylinder and everything else. So that's why you have to set them at a zero lash. It's a, it's a little disconcerting to do that, a little strange, but that's why. washers that are underneath those head nuts are pretty specific little guys and from what I understand uh, you have to kind of inspect them and make sure that they're just so and it might be a part that needs to get replaced I'm not certain about that but once again we'll let the uh, machinist tell us exactly what we need to do with these Okay, so place your bets now. That's how far the head is from this diagonal that's right here. This is the thing we need to clear, this guy right here. So go ahead and place your bets. I give it a 50-50 chance. When I measured it, it was within an eighth of an inch, which could be anything. So I have to get this entire head over these studs here. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Okay, well we've got all of the bolts off and all the washers out. The head is ready to move out. Now these things are usually a little bit hard to kind of get going and fuss with to get them out. I'm more worried about the clearance, so we'll see how it goes. So, okay, let's give it a try. Oh, it's loose. All right, there we go. Okay, I didn't expect that to happen. Go, cleared that. Yes, 
Okay, we got push rod tubes here. That's what was pushing us. Whoa, and our last push rod. We'd rather not lose. Okay, there we go. Oh my God, could we be any closer? Last push rod tube. All right, while we're here, we might as well get the this exhaust bit out as well, just so it's out of the way. There we are in the front side, right up against this diagonal tube, right on the edge, and then in the back. So that's the offending stud. We can almost get by the second one, but boy, just not quite going to make it, it looks like. Well, that's a bummer. We'll have to figure out something to do. So look at that success. I got it off the car. Take a look at the pistons here. I don't know, they look kind of dirty, huh? Look at that one, that's number three. And then this one is number four. They're kind of pitted and kind of carbony, if you ask me. The cylinder walls look really good in there though. They don't, I don't see any scoring or anything in there. I'm gonna clean them out carefully and then bag this whole area up so it doesn't get any dirt in it. So cylinders look fine, they're rusted as usual, but they look fine. So, I bet you're wondering how I got that thing off, huh? Well, let me show you. So take a look at this. See that strap, that blue strap goes out around that big three inch, huge structural member. It goes up over the transmission and comes back around. And my idea was, can't I just pull this whole transmission over a little bit? It's mounted on rubber mounts back there. You can kind of see them right above the, the, the ratchet there. So that was my idea, but I got to the end tension of that ratchet. There's no way it's going to go any further. So, and it still didn't work. So step two was to jack up the transmission just off center there in the hopes of raising it enough along with that pull on the left side to just barely clear that stud and it worked. It just barely cleared it. I had to kind of wrangle it through the hole under there to get it out because there's a brake line under there too, if you can see that. So it was a little bit weird, but I got it out. Okay, now the moment of truth. Here's the actual head and the valves. So this is cylinder number four. This had the worst of the leak down numbers and that intake valve was hissing really bad. That's the big one on the right there. And this is cylinder number three. This is the one with the valve that sort of stuck and then popped on me. So it doesn't look that bad from this side. That little scratch on the valve was from me when I was trying to get this thing out. And I think I bumped it with one of the studs, head studs. But all in all, they don't look too awfully bad. I don't see any burning on the valves. Maybe the valve guides are just not so great. I don't know, would need a full inspection on this. Maybe the, I don't know, maybe the seats are bad. It's hard to tell. But I hope this wasn't in vain, but it's out now and we can send it to the machine shop and have them take a look at it and see what they think. Well, today was a success. We got the head off. I don't see anything too obviously wrong. I don't see an obvious burnt valve, but I have a feeling that they're sticking. So off to the machine shop with this and we'll see what they have to say. So the rest of our parts here, we have all laid out. We'll go ahead and clean them really, really well. Uh, the push rod tubes here were leaking as well, so that's not good. And they had some kind of red schmutz on them, which that wasn't helping at all. So we'll go ahead and replace all the seals and just make sure these things are completely clean and leak free when we install it. So that's great. We also validated that we do indeed have steel Pro Molly push rods. So that means that we have to set our valves at zero clearance. So it was good to verify that as well. All right. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, questions or comments, leave them down below and stay tuned for more adventures with the Beck Spider. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.